Hello everyone. I'm here today for the Sipkin Lands Trust and our idea is to have you guys make a simple little nature journal that you can take outside with you either into your backyard or if you go for a walk on one of the Lands Trust properties. It's a little thing that you can carry with you to keep track of what it is you're seeing. All right, so what I have for materials, what you're gonna need, um, I have some old books that um, I have already cut up. Now, here's the thing with old books. You need, if you're a kid, you need to get permission. So this is just an old um, kind of nature-themed storybook that I had um, for the purpose of cutting up and using in journals. So those are fun to have for decoration. For paper, you can use a number of things. This is just copy paper I grabbed out of the, um, the printer. Or um, this is, if you wanna make do a little more involved uh, project, you can take that copy paper and you can use uh, a cup of tea or uh, the leftover coffee from the morning's coffee and you can brush that coffee or tea onto the paper and then let it dry. Um, you can dry it in the oven. I put my oven at 250 or 300 degrees and let it dry in there so that it speeds up the process. And what happens is it makes a really lovely kind of aged pattern. And these guys are tea. And then this one is coffee. And I let the coffee grounds sit right on that page. And then I tore the edge to make it look kind of aged. So those are possibilities. And then it's also nice to have um, something thicker for the cover. So this is a piece of craft card that you would, could just fold in half and use as a cover to hold in the other pages. And this is a piece of, um, this is a piece of scrapbook paper. So it's a little bit thicker and I tea dyed this. So this also makes a really lovely cover for a little journal. You could also just use regular scrapbook paper or a piece of um, cardstock from, if you have cardstock for your printer of any color, it doesn't matter. You could use um, a book page. You could use a magazine page. You could use a piece of map if you have like old National Geographic maps lying around. You could use the, the paper from an old map, um, but get permission first. Don't go tearing up your parents' books. All right, so let's use this piece of craft card. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put this one away because it's kind of wonky. Oh, you could also use a file folder. So this is a file folder that I have uh, coffee dyed to make it look old. You could cut up an old file folder and that would make a perfectly good cover for a book, super sturdy. Um, you could also, now that I'm thinking about it, use, uh, if you have an art pad, a pad of art paper, I think I have one here. This uh, is from Michaels and the cover is a really thick, sturdy piece of paper. And then the back here is also very sturdy. That would be a good writing surface. Um, so you could use anything that you have in your house that's paper that's a little bit thicker uh, for a cover. So I'm just going to use this piece of craft card. And all you do is you fold your pieces of paper in half. You fold each piece of paper in half. Like this. And this is the tea dyed paper, but again, you do not have to use tea dyed paper. It's just a fun little added element to the craft. You can just use the copy paper. Or if you have loose leaf notebook paper that has the lines, if you like the lines, you can certainly use loose leaf notebook paper. Or if you have a pad of graph paper, graph paper is fantastic for keeping notes. And then once you have your pieces of paper folded the way you'd like them, you just slide one into the other, like this. Maybe I'll break up the white and the tea dyed. Take turns here. And then the other thought I had that might be fun to conclude 
include. This is a um, wax paper sandwich bag. Here, let me use this one that's not taken apart. Uh, no, it's okay, I'll use this one. This is a wax paper sandwich bag. And I've just folded it, creased it, and you can include that in um, what this is called a signature. So you can include, include that as well. So if you're out walking around and you see, oh, I wonder what kind of leaf that is. You can pick the leaf and put it in there and bring it home and look it up. And then you take your signature and you put it inside your cover. So you can see that you have the makings of the beginning of a little booklet. So now, how do you bind it all together? Well, there are a lot of options. If you have um, a stapler that can reach, you could just staple, put a couple staples in that crease. I don't have one of those. Um, what I do have and what I tend to use is some kind of string. You can use embroidery thread. Dental floss works really well. I happen to have this waxed linen thread that I use for book binding. This is harder to come by. You do not have to use this. You could use baker's twine. You could use, if you have a little ball of um, regular white twine, which I have around here someplace, um, which I don't see. But yeah, any kind of thread or twine you could use to, to bind it. And if you're gonna do, use bind it, what you need is you need some kind of pokey tool. Now this is called an awl. This is also something that you will need um, help with from a, an adult to do because it's very pokey. Um, but you could use a kitchen skewer, you could use the point of a scissor, you could use anything that's pokey. Um, and again, you really need an adult to help you with this. So what you do is you take a needle, again, an embroidery needle or any kind of needle that will fit your twine or your thread is fine. It doesn't have to be any kind of special needle. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna measure three lengths. There's one, two, three lengths of whatever kind of um, twine or thread you're using. Okay, so I have three and I'm going to thread my needle. And what we are going to make is called a three hole pamphlet stitch. Let's see, does that needle fit? Uh, that one's gonna be too narrow for my twine. So I'm gonna get a slightly bigger one Um, again, embroidery floss is something that most people have, and embroidery, embroidery floss fits into most needles. So I'm just going to thread this. I do not need to make a knot in this. I'm just threading it. So then I open this up to the center. This is the center of that uh, stack of papers called a signature. And I'm going to use my pokey tool, and I'm just going to estimate where the center is. And I'm going to poke through the, the back or the spine of that little booklet and I'm going to make a hole. And I'm going to take my threaded needle and I'm going to thread that twine through the hole and I'm going to leave a fairly good size tail there. I'm not going to go all the way through but I'm going to leave that long piece of twine exposed. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take my pokey tool again and somewhere, not at the very bottom, but somewhere towards the bottom, maybe an inch up, I'm gonna make another hole. And this time, I'm gonna come from the back towards the center and pull that twine through. And then our third hole, because we're doing a three-hole pamphlet stitch, is I'm gonna do, do the same thing towards the top. I'm gonna make a little hole about an inch down from the edge of the top of that booklet. And I'm going to go from the center through that hole. Okay, we're almost there. The last thing you need to do is we're going to go back through that center hole there, but from the back towards the middle. And it's good to not 
Um, it's good to try to not poke your needle through the thread that you just used. I find a trick to find out if you've done that is I pull up on the original thread a little bit and I, oops, wrong one. And I just pull these guys up and you can see whether or not you've whether or not you've split this one. I haven't. The other thing you have to do is you have to make sure that you have one of these legs on either side of the center twine. See how that works? One's on either side. Because now we're going to tie a knot and when we tie a knot we're going to go over the center one and it's going to cinch down the papers so that they won't move. So I just did a little overhand knot like that and I pull it pretty tight and then I'll do it again. And there we go. We have a bound booklet with a three hole pamphlet stitch and that's how it looks on the back. And then if you have beads or charms or, or things, you can stick things on the ends or you can just tie a little bow. If you go behind it, it comes out nicely. There we go. Come out on either edge. So there we go. Now, you're gonna want to decorate the cover. And this is what I use. If you have an old, these old golden guides work really well. These work really well if you wanna cut out the butterflies from these old golden guides. Or you could put the whole thing down and you could collage different images of nature onto that, the front of that. Um, ooh, maybe I'll leave those flowers on because they're pretty. So I'm gonna cut out the flowers and that butterfly. And you can also find images on um, Google Images that you can print out and cut out and glue down. So you can just create a, a pretty picture or you can paint it or you can draw it with markers or crayons or colored pencils or whatever you want to do to decorate your cover. And then on the inside, what you want to do, so we have our little sandwich bag for putting treasures that we find in there. And then once you start to keep your journal, what's an important thing to do on any scientific journal is you want to put the date that you go outside. So today is what, May something, 9th? Let's just call it the 9th. You want to write your location. So maybe you take a walk over at White Eagle. And White Eagle is a really nice lands trust property um, over it's across the entrance to it is a, is across the street from um, the package store that is at the the corner of route 6 and Converse Road it's a great place to go walking and then sometimes it's a good idea to to note the weather so you might say sunny and you might today, you might say that there are some snowflakes and you can use any code you want or you can write the words out. And then you're gonna wanna leave a spot for observations. So what did you see? Did you see a hawk? Or did you see some red-winged blackbirds in the marsh? You might record that you ran into some friends who were walking their dogs and then you can just Put those down there in little bullets and then you have your nature observation if you're doing um, a backyard observation say you're just gonna go in your backyard and you're gonna sit on your favorite rock underneath your favorite tree then you don't even you can just say backyard or you could write the your your address and the same thing, you would record the date, the weather, and any observations. And there's a lot to be said for sitting in one place 
every day or every other day or once a week and noting the changes that happen, especially right now where it's spring and you can see all different kinds of birds and you can see the different plants that are blooming at different times and the bumblebees are coming out and the hummingbirds have come back. So you can list all those things and you could say, what plants are they going to? Do Are the bumblebees going to the newly blossom dandelions because those are one of the first flowers that they go to in the spring and use their nectar to help jumpstart their energy. So that is a very simple backyard nature journal. Um, please email me through the Lands Trust or through, um, I, I, we can post my email if you have any questions about any of, any of these uh, instructions. So I hope you get out there. Hope you have a nice day and enjoy the sunshine. Bye-bye.